Welcome to How to Split a Toaster, a divorce podcast about saving your relationships from True Story FM. Today on the show, we're raising a glass to something you might very much want to split, but can't. Co-parenting. Welcome to the show, everybody. I'm Seth Nelson, and I'm here with my good friend, as always, Pete Wright. Today on the show, we're talking about co-parenting with Michael Daniels, founder and CEO of FAIR. Family advocacy is your responsibility. It's an app dedicated to making the experience of co-parenting better through communications, argument, diffusion, and emotional support. Michael, welcome to The Toaster. Hey, guys. Thanks very much for having me. It's great to have you, man. Yes, it seems like this has been a, a, a long and important road for you, getting this app uh, out the door. Can you tell us a little bit about your uh, your story? Uh, what what got you into to thinking, you know what? I think I'm a guy who needs to make a co-parenting app. Yeah, that's, that's crazy, right? Um, well, a, a couple things. It's just Seth would definitely be able to speak to this so just in all of his years of experience. But, you know, I, I didn't know anything about uh, the legal world, obviously, when I'm getting uh, divorced, that whole process, the whole uh, arduous process of staying documented w- was a really, really challenging task for me. And, I, and I'm kind of a detailed guy, my backgrounds and, you know, home designing and building uh, some project management for them and, and uh, for like one of the largest companies in the world, actually. So and, you weren't, wait, you weren't in you, tech, you weren't the- no, not at all. No, I, I come, I, I worked for, so, so I, I used to design and, and, and build like high end luxury homes, <laughs> but I got my start working for Lennar corporation at Lennar is the largest uh, home builder in America, uh, by far. I, I'm just picturing it now, Michael, like, what do you want to do when you grow up? <laughs> I want to do building design or create a co-parenting <laughs> app, mom and dad. I just, I'm feeling like, I'm, I'm struggling. Yeah, me too. It's a, it's a, it's a, yeah, it's an easy segue into one or the other. No, it's, it's just that look, you know, that the home building world, you know, went to hell in 2008. I found myself divorced. And, uh, of course I was starting a new company. So didn't have a, didn't have a job at the time. And, trying to get things mm-hmm. rolling. And, uh, and, and I got to tell you, you think that the process comes to an end at, at settlement, but it doesn't it just goes on and on. And, and you'll find yourself back for more motions and spending more money. And you're constantly living in this anxious state of mind that you're documenting all the time. And then you just show up to your motion and they'll say, oh, he made all of that up. And the truth is, is you could make all of that stuff up. And, and, uh, and so I wanted to create something that that was going to work really well for for me and my my co-parent and and help us to communicate constructively really just to just to mitigate those misunderstandings and disagreements from escalating unnecessarily so when you say you show up and you write a motion and you're you're, i'm just gonna put a little meat on that but what i what i heard you say in my lawyer brain is Mm -hmm. you are trying to sign up your child for extracurricular activities and you've sent email or text message. Hey, I think she'll like horseback riding. I think he'll like lacrosse or soccer or whatever. You get no response. You sign the kid up and then they file a motion that says, Oh, he's unilaterally signing the children up for extracurriculars. And you show up to court and you say, no, I reached out to her. I sent emails, I sent texts and you're trying to like go through your old text messages Mm -hmm. or find your old emails Mm -hmm. And then the judge is like, well, I don't really know what happened when and what's best. Is that what you're kind of describing? That expenses, expenses are a really good one because as you know, people are really good about keeping a mental inventory of their own contributions, but they suddenly want to acknowledge contributions made by the other person. And people don't keep a good account of this, keeping all the paper trail, all the receipts, uh, and unless you're keeping a good spreadsheet. And even then you have people, you know, you have co-parents who won't agree on certain expenses. Like I didn't say buy $200 Nikes, go buy them $25, you know, shoes at Costco, you know, like you have people arguing about that sort of, that sort of thing. And then, so this is when you're already divorced or maybe you're going through the process Yeah, and you're responsible for either half of an expense or a percentage of the expense. Like if it's a, if it's an uncovered medical expense and it's a hundred dollar copay, you're supposed to, Hey, pay your 50% Mm -hmm. and, or you pay the hundred bucks and you ask her for the 50 bucks and you never get it, or you got to track it and you don't want to forget it. That is that kind of the problem you're trying to solve. There's a lot of animosity, resentment that's being built up. Um, and, and you almost can't even put a pin on it. You just know in your mind that, Hey, I've been getting screwed here. And, and there's no clear audit trail because it's very difficult to keep. Look, most parents are not necessarily bad parents. They're bad documenters. And so FAIR just makes it really easy to document in, in real time, like as life is happening, so you can just 
log it, track it, and forget it. Seth, how useful is this for you as an attorney? Brilliant. Love it. Everyone should sign up for it. <laughs> not just people that don't get along. These are, I'm not just talking about everyone who's having problems. You're just, what Michael's describing are parents who are now not living in the same house, having to manage co-parenting a child or children. I think this should be used by almost everybody. This is not just for people who don't get along. You can get along well. It's just how you dis- decide to communicate all the important issues about your kids in one place to make it easier for you. I gotta, I gotta tell you, I, I, I'm reading this. I mean, you, it's written on the tin, right? That that this is the app is designed for com- helping to co-parenting and, and communicating and solving problems. And I'm married, happily married with two kids. I could have used this when my kids were younger, right? This is like co-parenting. I, this is an amazing tool for documenting our own married lives. I, I, I find myself in no, a weird I, I, space of being a little bit jealous. Now, I got to tell you, I, I think it's true. I think a lot of people, I mean, if we live in a world now of two separate, two separate in- household incomes, two separate bank accounts. It, it really does yeah. help uh, when you ha- when you are, especially the expense feature, for example. I mean, when, when you have two incomes, mom and dad here, and, and one, one income's going to knocking out, you know, a payment on a, on a Harley and, and, and it starts to build resentment because finances are like the number one reason. Actually, you could tell me that Seth is finance is still the number one reason that people split up. It's in the top three in my mind. Yeah. It so, always starts with communication and communication about finances and sex or two big ones. How does your app help with the last one? Oh, wait, no, this is that's a different show. <laughs> We're getting there, man. I don't want to get all my secrets. All right? We're going to pull that one out next. <laughs> that's the post-divorce right. show we're going to have later. <laughs> no, I, I actually, believe it or not, guys, I have I have plans. To, we're going to be building a platform. It's, it's going to be called Be Fair Families. Actually, it's already in production, but called Be Fair Families. So it's more all-encompassing. And so, so like, it, people who are a part of this community, Be Fair Families, you can actually reconnect with people. Let's say, you know, you've got a kid with autism or ADHD or whatever, and you want to uh, join this community of people who are members of BFF. Well, you know, you can actually reconnect. We'll have co-parent connect. Because I got to tell you, how many times, like, as a single parent, you'll be, like, on Bumble, right? And then, and then you know, you tell somebody, yeah, divorce, two kids, and you get a response like, yikes. You know, like, uh, like that's the kind of stuff you get. Well, but if you're in the BFF community, you're already with like-minded people. And so, yeah, we're, we're getting there. We're, we're, that's he, amazing. He, like, clapped his chest like that was so sad. Like, no, come on. Yikes. That, happens that all is the time. sad. That breaks my heart. That's it's, it's true, right. Man. Look at you. That's what happens, Seth Nelson. Yeah. You hard and calloused man. I'm a hopeless romantic <laughs> at the end of all this. Brother. I will tell you, it's so it's pathetic how hopeless romantic I am. OK, but back to this app. Just describe how it actually works for people if they're at the doctor with a sick kid and they just swipe the credit card for a hundred dollar copay. And I'm just using a hundred to make it easy. Um, hopefully it's ten bucks. But and they swipe it. How does that actually work? What do they do? Why does this app help them? Okay, so you, so you swipe it, and this is the way, this is exactly what I do. In fact, it, it did it last night. Uh, as a matter of fact, my daughter just fractured her oh. foot. Um, yeah, it sucks. I was in the That's ER late last lousy. night. But so so you, 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 get the, you get the paperwork, right? You bring out the receipt. No, normally, whatever, that's going to be a full sheet, right? And you just pull, you pull out the app. You say you know, it, it has a category, you know, how much did you spend? You know, what was the expense? You have to categorize it. It has to meet one of these, uh, one of these classifications. And it's either a uh, medical, uncovered medical, dental, vision, extracurricular, school. As long as it meets one of those categories, it can, it can be logged. What we don't want are the in, are the, uh, are the voluntary expenses. So it, they don't have a, ca- a classification within there. Like, you know, I went and, you know, the things that the court wouldn't require you to share expenses on, right? Well, so, like what? Extra money on a birthday Yeah, what party. is that? It's like too extra much Extra money on a birthday. Yeah, I mean, I, I got a limousine for my kids to get okay. picked up. You know, you owe me that. You know, like, you know, I don't, you know, there, there's certain uh, I, I, voluntary expenses versus involuntary expenses. Right. I don't know if that's the right legal jargon, but. No, the concept there, and it's different in all jurisdictions. They're, they all have different ways of dividing up these expenses. The general concept in. Pete, you ready? Check your local jurisdiction. I was just marked it on my bingo card. <laughs> is that what you need to do is know which one are court orders and 
what falls under child support and what doesn't and what are extracurriculars or stuff that you're going to be reimbursing back and forth to each other. Because what Michael is not laying out there is a miscellaneous category. Let's see. I'll read that. I have childcare, dental, medical, extracurricular, personal. That could be, a, that could be um, extracurricular, I guess. School, vision, and uncovered medical. Those are the six categories. And those are pretty uh, eight, much encompassing. Eight categories, what, sorry. The, right. That's pretty much what we encompass in in Florida. Um, there might be others here and there, depending on your marital settlement agreement, or your parenting plan, but that's it. So they pick a category, they put in the expense, what happens next? Okay. Then, it, you know, obviously you're, you're logging this expense in the phone. So now, and now you can choose which child is for like my profile. I've got my two children set up here. So you can, you can select these. Is it all, both children? Is it or as in all, uh, my son, my daughter, and then I can upload up to three photos. So generally I'll upload the receipt. I'll upload, here's the sneakers and, and here are the sneakers on him, you know? And, um, and then once I've done those, I can leave some notes there too, you know, how to get him new sneakers. He tore the other ones up or, you know, we need cleats for soccer or whatever. Uh, I leave the notes, I hit save and doom. I can throw away that receipt. Now I don't have to keep the paperwork. And if I ever need this two years from now, I can just go to export. Uh, I want to export a full report. And I can say, I want my, I want all my messages. I want my expenses, my co-parenting calendar, my private notes, my geo check-ins, which we can get into later. And then boom, I hit, I hit that. And I have everything. In okay. The court ready for you that. hit that to start because you're, you're there. You moved on. You're ahead of where I'm I am, far. which all right, is go. all great. But you take the picture. Let's use, um, cleats for soccer okay. because that would be an extracurricular as opposed to just new shoes. Sure. So you hit cleats for soccer, hundred bucks. You take the pictures, you send them over, and mom gets a notification? Yes, mom gets an instant push notification that you've logged the expense as she's invited to go check it out. So it'll go straight to her push notifications in her phone if she's activated that. She can turn that off, obviously. Now, she's like, yep, I'm good with the expense. She owes you 50 bucks. How does that happen? Okay, so now it's logged. And in, in FAIR's expense feature, you can go to your your all expenses. And there's a pie chart that'll show, you know, the exact percentage, you know, I'm at 48.7 and whatever, you know, you can see it in real time shifting. Every time you log an expense, the pie chart will be shifting. And, and so I just encourage people to say, you know, rather than getting in the tit for tat, send me five bucks, send me this, send me that. If you just kind of hover around your 50% or 25, 75, just hover there. It actually reduces conflict because when you get into this whole thing of go Venmo me or do this, I don't have the, and I, and I'm, I'm not doing it yet because of the licensing exp- expenses of having to, uh, that you got to pay in order to basically have Venmo as an API. Mm-hmm. Or something right. like and you're trying to keep this to be cost effective to, to deal with parents, right? Exactly. Some, some parenting percentages, Pete, will be 50, 50. Mm-hmm. Some might be 60, 40. Mom pays 60%, dad pays 40%. Some might be dad pays 75%, mom pays 25%. What Michael's advocating to his clients is if dad pays, a, an ex, I'm going to use a 60, 40, mom pays an expense of $100. That's the first expense in. She's responsible for $60. Dad's responsible for 40. It's $100. Right now, that's all on mom's side. She paid the right. 100 bucks. But then- Dad turns around and he pays another hundred dollar bill for um, signing up for soccer, private soccer lessons. Now, if you look at it, they've each spent a hundred. It's 50 50. But if mom spends just a little bit more, it will end up being a 60 40 percentage. You follow me on that, Matt? Right, right, Pete? right. Yeah. So he's saying, look, as long as whatever your percentage is supposed to be 50 50, 75 25, 60 40, as long as it will do the math for you and keep you hovering around that number. You're pretty good. As opposed to saying, I just spent a hundred bucks, Venmo me the $40. Right. Right. That's, that seems to make sense, right? You've, you've documented the individual expenses for whatever purpose, taxes, court down the road, whatever you need, but you don't have to watch them. And that is, am I saying that right? That to, if you just watch the graph, it does the math, you watch the graph, you resolve problems that, and, and confusion that haven't even happened yet. Well, you can set it up also to say, we we're going to settle up once a month, once a quarter. I mean, rather than getting in this tit for tat every single day, because it's just a point of conflict. 
And so here's a number at the end of the month that you need here's to the just number we're floating around here yeah. and you owe me this and you can log, Hey, I just paid you that we're, yeah. we're square. So Michael's point there on when you square up is really important because if you're not using this type of app, what is in a lot of parenting plans and settlement agreements is language that says, I'm the dad, I have to submit this expense to mom. I have 30 days from the date of the ex- expense to submit it. If not, I waive it. Because you don't want a parent hoarding all the expenses and then filing it in October. So they all of a sudden, the other side owes them three grand and gets it paid in November. And now you have no money to pay for Christmas gifts because you just had to pay your ex three grand. And that three grand represents expenses for the last eight months, yeah. nine months, whatever. Yeah. yeah, it could be. So you don't want to... So I... In our agreements, it's got to be timely or you waive it. Now, the flip side is then the person has to pay it timely. Okay. So what Michael's advocating, which I'm not opposed to, I just want it to match the agreement where he's saying, look, we're going to square up quarterly, but we're going to use this app. Yeah. Or we'll square up if the percentage gets greater than. 10%, 50%, 30% 10%, 50%, 30% out of whack. You know, there's different ways to do it. But Michael's point is well taken. If you're not doing five and 10 bucks every single time, it reduces conflict. And that's what this app helps us do. Yeah. Did I get that right, Michael? Yeah, you, you, you really did. You hit it very well here. It's, it, it's just, I've just found that, that when you can, I mean, everybody's had a roommate, right? Well, <laughs> look, you're living in a really rough world when you're, when you're communicating through your passive aggressive post-it notes on the refrigerator. And, you know, you're, you're holding all this animosity because I just bought paper towels and, and, and it's, it's like all that tiny little setting settling up really becomes a point of, of contention. And, and, and especially with a, with a co-parent, this is somebody you've already had a lot of conflict with. So, um, it's, it's even more so I, I just think that, um, and, and I even have it really easy. So within that pie chart, you can say, I want to see it in any, in particular month since inception year to date, like, it's set up to, to, to access it and view it from a, from any sort of, um, monthly quarterly, whatever you want to do. So you can settle up. Uh, honestly, like I, I like just logging everything right away. It's, it's there. I don't have to worry about, Oh, where did I put that receipt? Was it in my wallet? Was did I stuff it in my glove box? Like you don't worry about losing receipts. That really speaks to a lot of what the app seems to do, which is reduce friction in a uh, sort of data entry in and around managing the co-parenting unit. Um, you've, you've also got some, you know, geotagging built in check-ins for, I assume drop offs and, yeah. and, and things like that makes things easier. Yeah. So uh, I want to make it clear. People m- m- have a misconception of this. It's not a geo tracker. I'm not able to track my co-parents. Some people are like, yeah, I remember one person actually canceled their account because they're like, cause your geo check-in isn't a, your geo tracker, she called it, isn't a, isn't a tracker. She's like, I want to know where the hell he is. <laughs> but <laughs> no, you don't they, actually you know, like, say it's a geo tracker. <laughs> no, I don't. I call <laughs> it a geo that, check-in. It's a made up word. <laughs> it's a made up. Yeah. I don't know. People see what they want. I think it's, I make up words all the time in court. I'm good with that. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so, so this is the reason I created it. Cause I actually used uh, the legacy brand that was out there this is our family wizard. I used them and they, they didn't have the, this feature and a lot of their features. I just kind of like read hundreds of their reviews and wanted just to improve upon what they had, mm-hmm. you know? Um, but I, I gotta, I gotta tell you, so there's this day I had a time sharing schedule of, you know, we were in the middle of another motion. And so we had this temporary order that was in place that I was supposed to deliver the children 43 miles away from me down in Miami. Um, and it, it, within a two hour window, right? So I drive all the way down there. I'm sitting there in front of the house. I'm knocking on the door. Nobody's answering, sending messages, co- phone calls, no response. And after 30 minutes of sitting there, I'm like, I don't know what to think. You know, I just, so I just turn around and I head 43 miles back home. And upon getting home, I get contacted by, by my attorney. Um, who had just been contacted by her attorney saying that there it is. Where are you? Yeah. Yeah. Where are you? You're in violation. Yeah. You're in contempt of court, blah, blah, blah. And I said, no, I was there. I, I was out the door. I was waiting there. And, um, and they said, well, they said, you're, you're lying, you know, like, and, and of course, you know, this could have completely altered my entire future with my children. Uh, you, th- these little things, you just don't Man, know. I how just they saw the light bulb go on on Pete. Yeah, I got <laughs> it. I got and, it. And, and I mean, it's it's really stressful. And so fortunately, I had taken a toll road. And so I was able to pull my SunPass records and prove that I had exited this toll. 
um, you know, a mile from her house within that window. So I, I was really kind of clear to this particular accusation. But, but like, imagine if I'd taken any other road. I mean, I would have been totally, totally you know, up shit creek. I mean, yeah. I would have been in big trouble because then it becomes a, a he said, she said issue in front of a judge. And the material the fact is, is that the kids weren't dropped off. And I'm, I was likely to lose that. So with, with a geo, with the geo check-in feature, I can just show up down there. I pull up the app. It's super, super simple. I just, I just, uh, I can drop a pin and it, this is where I am. It's not like Facebook's check-in feature that you could check yourself in at the Eiffel Tower right now. Like this right. is where you are on the planet. And- <laughs> That's where I am. What's the problem with that? <laughs> it doesn't look like the Eiffel Tower right there. Yeah, it's great. It's great. <laughs> it's a little cloudy. You might not see it behind me. I think that's really important because it actually, it it's logging, like you log an expense, you're logging a location with a, yeah. a date and time stamp and sharing time it with stamp. everybody that needs to be shared with. That's uh, right. And she would have gotten an instant push notification yeah. and saying, hey, you know, um, you know, Mike just checked in uh, right here and she could see, oh, there he is on the map. He's right in front of my house. There's no way she would have picked up a phone and called a lawyer. There, right. You know, I, I could send it. I could have a time, date, and stamp um, photo as well. Me with the kids. Here I am in front of your house. Yeah. Done. And um, and it's incontestable. And I would have been. I would have been totally cleared. And so I would have like, even though I was fine that day, I didn't do anything wrong. I still paid eight hundred dollars in legal fees. I was about to go <laughs> there. Imagine the expense you just saved. Yeah. I, exactly the thought going through my head. And from the lawyer's perspective, Pete, these are the calls we hate to get. Yeah, why do you want to be messing with this stuff? Well, not only it's not that I don't want to help my clients and be there, but here's the conversation that I'm sure Michael had with his lawyer. The um, okay, Michael, I I believe you, but it's trust and verify. So let's figure out how we can prove that you were there. Did you take a picture? Did you take a toll road? And you have to then go get your Sun Pass records, and you're adding all this up. And then when I talk to the other lawyer, I say, I wasn't there. I wasn't driving with Michael. I can't tell you whether he's there or not. I've worked with Michael a long time. I do believe what he says, but I appreciate that you have to believe what your client says. And we're going to have to go prove it in court that he was there because he's the one playing defense on this because he was supposed to be there. Right. So one little nugget. um, I frequently will advise clients that whoever is going to start their time sharing does the driving. So in Michael's example, he was ending his time sharing, Pete. So he had to drop the kids off. Mm -hmm. But if you're starting your time sharing and you want your kids, you're going to go. Yeah. So so in this case, as we armchair rewrite history, she would have been the one to drive the 43 miles from Miami to come get the kid. You want them, you come get them. Exactly. Does Michael Corleone write all of your legal agreements? Because I can neither confirm that. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> All right, I I got other things I want to talk about, but but I I have this one other feature that I want to make sure you you talk about, and I'm glad oh, you stopped follow. me on the 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 geolocation. Yeah, if there's anything else I miss, please let me know. But yeah, how are people using the file vault? I imagine it's a bunch of legal documents uh, that you're yeah, storing in there, yeah. right? So the file vault, um, obviously, so we take security affair very seriously. I want everybody to know that one one thing that differentiates us between free apps. I mean, look, there's nothing free. If they're not selling you a product, you are the product. They're mm-hmm. selling you. And and we don't do that. There's none of this information that'll ever be shared, sold to any third parties. That's what your subscription pays for. So the file vault, um, what it is, it's, a, it's, it's an encrypted vault that is shared. So anything you put into the file vault, like for example, I put vital documents in there. I can't tell many times I'm just last night there. They, it's crazy. They'll ask questions about what you were at birth. Like who freaking cares? But <laughs> you, they, they ask these questions, uh, you know, like what they weigh with time. So, they true. so I, I literally have all of that stuff. I like social security and numbers, school information. When it comes to we're away on vacation somewhere and they need to log in, I have all of their school credentials to log in and take their courses. Um, I mean, you name it, blood type information. That's kind of important information right now with COVID running around. I have, I have a lot of their medical information. I have our, our time sharing agreement or settlement agreement, whatever, all uploaded in there in PDFs. So in the file vault, you can have images, you can leave notes, you can leave um, uh, uh, obviously vital documents of any kind uh, in PDF. And so all of this stuff is in there and it's shared between you and your co-parents. So the two of you can see it. Now, the private notes is essentially the same thing, except it's only visible by you. Okay. So if, if there's something that you're documenting in preparation, you're doing this in preparation to give it to your attorney one day, you're putting it like if there's a bruise on your child, you want to take a picture and keep it all in one place so you can export it later. Um, whatever. That, that's, but Pete, that's look fine. at that file vault. Yeah. How, 
easy as that when you're at the doctor or you're going to the school or you're getting any of these documents where you just share them together as opposed to taking a picture, sending it or sending it via an email. It's all in one spot. Everyone has access to it. This makes your life easier. This is less conflict. This is less calls to lawyers. This saves money. Huge. Uh, it, yeah. It's all wins. At the uh, uh, the the last sort of set of, of features is this, uh, you know, this thing I'm just sort of lumping into reporting. And uh, one of the things you've mentioned a couple of times here is this idea of admissibility. And so I wonder if you could talk a little bit about that. What what makes this admissible? Are there some sort of standards for court admissible documentation? Like, how did you go about ensuring that what comes out of the app is acceptable to courts that that they I mean, and I don't know, Seth, I mean, I'm sure I am sure you have a jurisdictional thing to talk about. So. Well, right. It's all in jurisdiction. But what you're talking about is rules of evidence. So the quick nutshell on this is Michael has a lot of information about his case. The question is, is can that information be told or shown to the judge in some manner where the judge can now consider it in making the decision? There's a lot of reasons. You've heard this, Pete, hearsay. Hearsay is not allowed to go into court. There's a lot of exceptions to hearsay. But the point of that is everyone instinctively knows there's some things the judge isn't allowed to hear. But what Michael does and what uh, these judges will do and check your local jurisdiction, but because these are communications back and forth between the parties Mm -hmm. and they're made in real time and there's some other factors to that, that the judge is allowed to consider it. And therefore, everything you're putting in this app and you write back and you communicate back and forth, the judge can see. So when you say, hey, I really think horseback riding is a great idea or I really think lacrosse or soccer or swimming is a great idea, please let me know your thoughts. The judge can tell when you read it. If Michael sends that to his co-parent, can check when mom read it. Did mom respond? Did mom ignore the question and just go on to something else? So all that comes up and you're not trying to piece together text messages or emails over long periods of time. It's all just laid out and it makes it a lot quicker and cheaper for the lawyer to review when they have to prepare for that hearing. Yeah. Did I get that wrong, right, Mike? Oh, man, you, you nailed it. I mean, you say Pete, that. I'm like so rocking it today. You really are. Yes. Do you have an app you yes. want to this develop? Is cause... <laughs> <laughs> no, he, he, I've just been through it the painful way. But, uh, yeah. you know, he's he's seen uh, countless other people do the same. No, I mean, that that's why we have a, a professional portal. So judges, mediators, guardians, uh, magistrates, they can actually log in. And, um, and, and, and now it doesn't affect the login. See, right now, when I log in, it actually documents he logged in this such and such date. But they log in and they can see all this information. Like because they have said. their own. It's not like you're. They have their own username, password, account yeah, they, to get they can into log your in stuff. And monitor and, and and yeah, exactly. So I, I wow. like like talking parents is one where that a lot of attorney gets frustrated with that because if, for them to jump in and look, they they have to get the credentials of their client. But then them logging in or let's say it's a it's a guardian ad litem. Them logging in is giving that client credit for having logged in. Is a and it makes it look like they're the ones engaging. So this is is more like a over overviewing uh, person being able to come in and just see everything that's going on. So so they know this is actually happening. And and furthermore, when I export a report, I can stick my attorney's or email or the judge's email even right in there, and it'll send that PDF report straight from Fair straight to them. So there was no manipulating and. Like even the text messaging feature within the app, you can't go back and delete messages like you can on your iOS or Android. You you can go back and delete. It can be manipulated. This yeah. you cannot. That's fascinating. It's is it available everywhere? Is it available worldwide? Can everybody? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We actually have a yeah. lot of users right now in, in, in Bavaria right now. They're doing um, Bavaria. There's a, there's a university student right now doing her entire uh, thesis on co-parenting uh, apps, and you know, because it's not a big thing in Germany right now, but. But she's doing her entire um, thesis on it. And so we, we've given her 10 free accounts and she's doing a whole case study and going to do. I'm pretty excited about that because we do have quite a few users in the UK and Australia, uh, Germany. Pete, when I when I'm when I leave the tower here, that's where I'm actually headed next is to Bavaria. To Bavaria my, my, because, my flight's yeah. in about 30 minutes. You I'm just letting you know. Divorce so. and fancy sausages. <laughs> I can see it now. 
I, I just want to talk briefly about Planet of the Apps. Is it is it too trite to ask you about that? Yeah, let's do it. That's fun. All right. Oh, so he's been waiting for this. I, I've been I, eating it up as we can. I've been holding holding this because I it's not it's it was a couple of years ago, but it's still very exciting to be. Um, so Planet of the Apps was this show produced by Apple that was essentially Shark Tank, a Shark Tank for for app development, where you get on this giant escalator and you mm-hmm. ride this this. I, I'm going to say it's a ridiculous escalator, but it was. <laughs> cool for the show. You ride this ridiculous escalator. You have 60 seconds while you're on this escalator and you pitch Jessica Alba, Will I Am, Gary Vaynerchuk and Gwyneth Paltrow and they get an opportunity to either say your app sucks, I'm not I don't want to hear anymore. Yeah. And they had these they had their iPads and they swipe left or right. It's like Tinder for app app investment. Yeah. And yeah. and if the if they all said no, you're out, right? But for you you had two no's and two yeses, which means people wanted to hear more. And so you get to the bottom, you get to talk some more. I got to tell you, man, you nailed that pitch. Like, that was great. And not only did he nail it, he convinced all four of them, even uh, Jessica Alba and Will I Am, whatever. They were the no's. He turned their, changed their minds and, and got four yeses. So now they're pitching him. OK, are you are you with me, Seth? Oh, I'm with you. He okay. makes the pitch, two he makes no's, the pitch. two yeses. He gets to the bottom. He yes. gets to explain more, and he converts the two no's to yeses, and now they want to go into business with now him. Now they want to go into business with him, and he gets to pick. Now, I set the the story up there. Let's talk about your experience before we talk about kind of how it, it landed. What was your experience on, on Planet of the Apps? Why did you decide to even do the show? Man, that was crazy, man. I tell you, some lessons out of that that I think everybody should consider – uh, when again, guys, I didn't know anything about technology. I didn't really know anything about law either, other than my own experience uh, through many years of court motions. Um, you know, but I, I remember sitting there one day, and, and I've always had this idea for this. And of course, that geo check-in event really got me. But I remember reading about some 32-year-old guy who created some feature. He sold a Snapchat for $54 million. And I was like, you know, <laughs> if I don't do something with myself and get in this technology thing, it's going to pass me by. And, and, and I'm going to just keep building homes forever. And I'm passionate about this. Something needs to be fixed about this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go create it. I'm going to go do it. You know, what, what the heck? Why not? But it's a bit of a gamble because, man, I mean, more than, more than 99.9% of apps don't make, make any money. I mean, yeah. More than that, don't, they, they totally fail, don't make any money. And Much so, you know, like you podcast looking, shows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, like podcast That's shows. That's right. Uh, so it, so it's, it's a really risky thing because you start saying, you know, these things cost hundreds of thousands of dollars to develop. And, and so when I started looking into it, I, I, what I did learn from building was that cheap is expensive. Anytime I've ever hired some jack leg contractor to do something, I've always ended up having to pay more to have it done. So I went out to Silicon Valley and I found the best company. that They just finished uh, Citibank's app. So I hired them and I paid a lot of money for it. But, uh, and this could have totally gone up in smoke, right? But thank God I did. Because when Apple decided to cast a show, who did they go? They approached all of the top uh, companies Developers, in the area. Yeah. Right. And, and they said, do you have anybody that, that we should consider for this show? And they said, yeah, you should contact this guy over in Florida. And I think he'd be a good one. And so they called me up. And, and I mean, th- from the time that was, I called them on the 6th of July. By the, by the 30th of July... Uh, Apple had already contacted me. So, I mean, we're talking within the same month, they contacted me and said, will you be in beta by October 17th? And I, and I asked the team, hey, can you get me in beta by October 17th? They said, oh, we'll make it happen. So they got, I, I mean, if I had waited at all, I, I would have been, I, I would not have had the app at the this point. This is a crazy better. story. So right. you have the app, you're on the show. Yeah. You go down the elevator. I'm on the edge of my seat because I don't know how this ends. And now they pitch you. <laughs> and what happens? How do you decide... Well, yeah, I mean, they, they had the thing that was so like the, the the former CEO of BuzzFeed was up there with me. I mean, there were some people on that show who were like real heavy hitters, and yeah. I'm an absolute goon. You know, I don't know anything, and and so I'm I'm so intimidated, and I'm seeing people who went down and had four greens all of a sudden go four reds, and they're out. You know, they had four greens initially, and you keep pitching for like another twenty five minutes, and they're out. And so I was really nervous, but when I went down there and I only had two greens, I was like, okay, I'm screwed. But at least I had two, so I got to continue for another 25 minutes. And then they, they just all turned. Because I think everybody gets it, right? You've either been through it yourself, you grew up in a divorced home, or somebody really close to you has. Everybody can relate to the subject. 
And so I think that they saw that there was some serious um, opportunity here. And, and I so- feel like we're about to cut to a commercial break on the cliffhanger. And then yeah, we right. come back, we tell you the answer. <laughs> 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 it was scary, guys. I mean, it was, uh, you know, 100 people pitched, 20 people got, got partnerships. So that was pretty it, exciting. It's Who amazing. did you pick? Well, wait, so they all, like, they they all pitch him now. I, yeah. I want to, before you tell us who you actually picked, was there, it, what was compelling about their individual? Was there anybody else besides the person you picked that, that you were excited about working yeah, with? Yeah, I, I was, a, I, I, look, I, I was a big fan, uh, especially at the time, just, I was just, you know, digesting all kind of Gary Vaynerchuk stuff because he yeah. inspire you to be an entrepreneur, right? I was really interested in him, but but I really felt even though he was really Jones into to partner with me, he was really pissed. He was and pissed. I, he was. He was <laughs> not happy. He's out. It. He was shaking his head. He's like, worst mistake ever. That's what he actually said to me. Yeah. Like, worst mistake. But but I just felt like for my brand, I didn't want it to be like some angry dad's app getting revenge, right? I wanted this to have some balance to it. So yeah. uh, so I I did pick Gwyneth. Uh, cause she had obviously gone through one of the, one of the big divorces of whatever year that was 2016, 17. Good for you. Went with Gwyneth. W- uh, Gw- like they're like this, like that's awesome. It, it, t- tight. So I, I, what I loved about it was it was, it was Jessica and Will I am who were originally the reds and you changed their minds. And I, but, but the thing that stuck out to me was at the end of this, uh, Will I am says who is, you know, besides black eyed peas, he's a significant investor in technology and, and a hell of a nerd. And he turns around and says, you know, what you asked for was another 150 grand or something, I think on the show. And you knew exactly what you wanted to use it for. And he said, that is the most, most sane ask that I've of and and the most sort of legit app. I don't know the exact words that he said, but that, that I've heard on this show so far. And you were on like episode seven. They'd seen a lot of pitches by then. And he yeah. he he made these comments that this was this was the most rational investment that that he had seen was the was the sense that I got. And uh, so how how did that work for you? I mean, you got Gwyneth is, is she still advising you? Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I keep her abreast of what's going on. I mean, you know, w- w- the way I've learned when it comes to dealing with celebrity influences, you've yeah. basically got a couple bullets here and you've got to, you've got to uh, tap into those at the right time. So she gets my updates. She gets yeah. my, uh, you know, all my app updates, what's going on with us, but I'm really, uh, you know, I've got to get the, the company to the point that I've got, you know, uh, I've got a, a couple hundred thousand uh, subscribers before it's it's worth kicking that gear in, you know, and, get, and going bigger because yeah. otherwise you you you're, you're spent. Celebrities like to be involved with things that really move quickly. How is um, how is the uh, 2020 pandemic uh, impacted you? Man, it was tough, guys. For a while there, you wouldn't believe how many. It, it, it's actually sad because you, you you become very cognizant of just how many people live right on the margin of having their credit cards maxed out. So the amount of declined payments we were getting, you know, um, yeah. and, and we're talking. I mean, our app is only with a discount code seven ninety nine a month, mm-hmm. and people's credit cards were declining. I mean, it's sad because uh, it's really really sad to just see how many people. And that was just a hard time because then you have your, your payments are going down, but then people are contacting the, your support team thinking there's something wrong, which I have to then pay for the development uh, team to handle that. So it was, just, it was really, really difficult for a while, but we've rebounded. People are having trouble co-parenting and now they don't have the funds even to use this app. And it's seven ninety nine a month with the discount. Is that what you just said, yeah, Michael? Yeah, seven ninety nine a month, or or we have a year seventy nine dollars for a whole year, or one ninety nine for three years. Eighty bucks, two hundred bucks for three years. Two hundred bucks for three years. Yeah. Call a lawyer. See how quickly you burn through that two hundred dollars. Yeah, you know, and I used to think that lawyers would be my biggest adversaries when it comes to this stuff because it's like, oh, this is hurting their billable hour. But I got to tell you, a good lawyer, he's like, man, dude, I don't want to spend all this time with a pair of legal sifting through this crazy paperwork and you know i'd rather just take on more more cases and be more more productive i was actually amazed to see that lawyers are are my biggest advocates i you know i, I that's I, I i guess i guess that's that's a surprise uh but my sense is even just from the work that i do and i would imagine in home building what would you rather be doing the things that really test and stretch your skill set or the nickel and dime stuff that is it, that's just rote and i i, I get it i get i get it I and get it. Uh, and i appreciate what michael's saying and i think the lawyer that says no, I don't want my clients using this app and is concerned about getting those billable hours for their paralegal or for them to, to review for yeah. a hearing. They're missing the point of practicing family law. You're supposed to be helping people, probably not 
doing what they need to be doing in their offices to really help people. So, Pete, we got we to gotta let people know where they can find this. We do. Uh, well, first of all, you, uh, fair.com. Uh, F-A-Y-R dot com. And you have been so gracious to, to uh, pass that little discount on to uh, to our listeners. You want to tell do you want to tell the people yeah. what they need to do? Yeah. If, if you just go to fair dot com, you can read all about it. You can sign up there and um, it will actually redirect you to our sign up page. And um, and yeah, it'll prompt you to put in a discount code. Just put in the discount code co-parent. Um, and just put in the co-parent and you will instantly get a 20 percent discount for life. Um, and j- just for the listeners of the show, if you want to shoot either me or my support team, I'm just Michael at fair.com. I love hearing from people. Uh, you know, I'm one person from one set of life experiences. And I honestly really like hearing about what other people think, uh, would make this app better. And I, and I really do take that seriously when it comes to developing future items. And, but if you just send me an email or send my support team an email support and just write toaster, it's all just write toaster and we'll give you 60 days free. Ah, uh, very, generous. very kind of you. Very generous. Michael Daniels, thank you so much, man. It's it's a real treat meeting you and having you on the show. On the show. Seth P., thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Thank All right, you. my friend. Thanks. Thank you, everybody, for downloading and listening to the show. On behalf of Michael Daniels and Seth Nelson, I'm Pete Wright. We'll catch you next time right here on How to Split a Toaster, a divorce podcast about saving your relationships. Seth Nelson is an attorney with Nelson Coster Family Law and Mediation with offices in Tampa, Florida. While we may be discussing family law topics, How to Split a Toaster is not intended to, nor is it providing legal advice. Every situation is different. If you have specific questions regarding your situation, please seek your own legal counsel with an attorney licensed to practice law in your jurisdiction. Pete Wright is not an attorney or employee of Nelson Coster. Seth Nelson is licensed to practice law in Florida.